Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Galgun Double Piece. This is going to be one of those games. Yes, it is, because if you look over on the right, if that art doesn't tell you what this game is going to be like, well there you go. But anyway, let's have a quick look around before we jump into the game proper. Now, it's got a shared data mode for cloud saves. If we go into options, there's a bunch of things here. You can change your site movement speed, your inverted axis and the story stuff. And you can change your buttons. Now, this game is a light gun game without being able to actually tap the screen, which is a little disappointing. You have to use the analog stick and stuff to do it, and you have to hold the R button to make your sight move slower. Now, you can map all four of these buttons. However, there is a problem. If you map shoot to the X button, which is something I tried to do, it won't work. It'll be mapped to the circle button by default. Don't ask why they've done this, but I think it's something to do with the PlayStation's API swapping those buttons depending on what region you're in and there's just some odd bug that came up because of it so yeah don't set your shoot button to x and you'll be fine but all the other buttons can be mapped to whatever you want as far as i can tell you can change your um language settings here but since there's no english dub it's all in japanese there's really no point to this so we'll go back and we'll go have a look at the collection in the dressing room because of course we're going to do that, right? This is a Blue Maxima video. It wouldn't be a Blue Maxima video if I didn't do a fan service game without having a look at some poor girl's peenies from time to time. The technical performance of this game is, to put it bluntly, terrible. The loading times are really long, the frame rate isn't very good at all. Even when we're just here looking at the girls on the pedestal, it'll just slow to a crawl sometimes. It's really frustrating, honestly, but you can change their outfits and their accessories and all of that, and it... Admittedly, it does look pretty nice, and yes, you can pull a giant rocket launcher out of nowhere. I know this from experience, and you can change pretty much every girl in the roster. So you can change... Th yeah, that this frame rate drop that you see in the background there, how it stops moving, that's the game, not the kit. It's literally that bad. But yeah, you can see um, there's the all the characters there, and you can also change the individual girls. Now, there are a bunch of individual girls in this game, and you can find their handbooks, and it'll tell you more details about them and stuff like that. And apparently there's a true love mode that you can unlock, which will let you seduce any of them, which is a little strange, but apparently um, it happens when you get like a true end or something like that, and I haven't gotten one of those yet because it requires a lot of effort, but... um. Yeah, as you can see, you can perv on them all you want, because of course you can. And admittedly, it's a lot more lighthearted than, say, a, um, I mean... Games like Senran Kagura are pretty lighthearted and all that, but, um, it's a lot more lighthearted than that, in comparison. Like, the clo their clothes don't fly off or anything like that, so... It stays relatively modest. I mean, there is one scene in one of the stages that I played where you literally, like crawl under a desk and when you're under the desk you look up and you see a big pink thing and no I'm not talking about a vagina you see this thing called the Mr. Happiness and then you shoot it and then you've got a clear shot of the girl who's standing above the Mr. Happiness which is very strange but anyway so you can come here to check out data on all the girls that you've seen in the game you will see all of them on one run but you can grab Oh yeah, this is um, this is one of the main girls. So yeah, she's actually voiced. Well, they're all voiced, but they're all voiced by like five people. So, except for the main girls themselves. But yeah, as you can see, and you tend to know a lot more about some students than you do others. And when you get the handbooks, you get a bunch of information about them. And you can even see teachers, which is funny because they're even more grown up and all that. But um, anyway. My data. So here are the um, story modes. Uh, story mode high scores. And as you can see, I've got the good end on... Um, what's a bloody name? I don't bloody remember. But yeah, I got... You can see all my stats over on the left there and stuff like that. Unfortunately, it won't show me how long the... Um, it won't show me... Well, I said the girls' clothes wouldn't be blown off, but they kind of are. <laughs> it's, it's a story element. It's not something you do by yourself. And yep, you can get them stuck in a window. And the art is actually pretty nice, all things considered. But yeah, it's quite lovely. It's quite... It's more... I keep forgetting the word for this. It's more, um... What's the word? 
uh, simple, not simple, um, fancy. Like, what's the word Playboy would use to describe itself? I can't remember, but Playboy in comparison to, like, free porn sites. I know this is a weird comparison to be making, considering I'm trying to say it's not as perverted as something like Senran Kagura, but it's still pretty perverted. But anyway, in the score attack mode, you can do one full route of one of the story characters, and there's five routes. And at the very beginning of the game, you're given the choice of what girl you want to go for. And there's two main girls. You can go for someone you don't know. You can go for pretty much anyone else in the game. Or there's a third option, which I can't remember at the moment. But yeah, there's five routes, and they all have thoroughly different stages. So if I go to the stage select, you can see that I haven't been through as many of the stages as you might expect. There's a ton of different stages. And they all have different enemy layouts and stuff like that. And I don't want to go into the event and battle stages because it'll spoil some parts of the story that I've already been through. But you can replay those as well. And there are trophies for getting perfect on those stages. So at least you can come and play them here. But let's get on to the story. Now the way the story works is that it's a bunch of stages end on end with a little bit of dating sim elements in there. So if I were to go to start game, well give me the option to pick a personality. One of four to start with, then you get seven. And if you get godlike, you get eight. But what that does is basically affects your starting stats, and your starting stats are one of four stats, and these four stats can determine who, what responses you can make when you talk to someone. And if you make the right responses, you get more affection, and if you get enough affection, you'll get the best ending, and you know, if you don't get enough, you'll get the worst ending, you know the drill, right? If we go to the Academy Store, you can change your options, go back to the tile screen and save and load. There's no auto-save, so you have to do your manual saving here. If we go to the Academy Store, we can see that you can buy things. So I'm actually going to buy some extra health and some extra shot power because I'm going to desperately need it. Because I'm playing on Expert and Expert is actually pretty difficult and I've got a screwed up analog stick. So this probably will work against my favor. You can buy other things as well. Like you can buy the groin protector, which will protect you from some of the evil uh, demon girls. You can buy the angel oil, which will protect you from being uh, attacked by, um, what's the word? Attacked by uh, girls that are a little bit too touchy-feely and earplugs for long-range attacks And you can get the measuring tape which will let you see everyone's measurements really quickly Which is actually kind of neat, but at the same time it is also indeed perverted and at the very end of the game Something pops up here. That's um called um angel glasses or something like that and when you have them, it makes all the girls almost entirely transparent, so you can see all their underwear, which is kind of neat, but again, it doesn't really have that much purpose. You can also do donate to the girl's band there with the weird bunny ears that she doesn't bring up. And you can also buy these things to increase or decrease your stats. Why you decrease them, I have no idea. But nevertheless, you can just buy a bunch of things here. Notably, the upgrades you buy don't carry over between story games. Once you finish the story mode, that's it. You're done. You have to start again. So... Don't expect to be taking your upgrades over. So we can only pick one stage at the moment. Sometimes you'll have a choice between three or four. And if we hit R, we'll be brought to Sakura Talk, which will let us look at some of the quests we can get. So they'll ask for your help doing quests, and you can... Basically, most of the quests are find a thing in the world and shoot it, find a, find a girl in the world and shoot it, or other things like that. You can also go to the chat site here, but it will teach you... Um, it will teach you things about playing the game. It's pretty obvious, right? So let's actually go on to the game now, shall we? As I said before, the loading times are pretty bad. They are most, most egregious when it comes to the loading times to get into the stages. It's pretty bad. And the performance itself isn't that great. Like, I've limited this video to 30 FPS just because there's zero point in play in recording this to 60 FPS. Just because it never hits 60. Like, it'll hit 30, sure, but it won't hit 60. It never hits 60. So, here we are. So, here's the drill when the game decides it wants to start actually playing the game. I'm trying to hit the student handbook there, but I just can't get it. So, here are the girls. The girls do several things. They try and hit you with long-range attacks, and you go to try and take them out of the air. These are technically their confessions for you. They will also try and get a bit touchy-feely, which you do not want. 
Like, for example, that girl there just tried to slap me with her letter of love. I'm not even kidding, this is a thing in Japan. You send a letter to the person you love. But anyway, I want to try and take out this girl, because she will try and hug me if I leave her alone for too long. And see, I just got hit by the, um... I just got hit by that long-range attack, so you don't want to do that. And I just got hit by this girl too. Get off me, you slimy little... <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, the girls will swarm you. Because you've been hit by the full power of Cupid's Disciples Angel Gun. And it is silly as hell. But yeah, you do want to try and take these girls out as fast as possible. They do have weak spots. And there are four weak spots. The shins, the crotch, the, bro the boobs, and <laughs> the head. And if you hit him in the weak spot, you get a ecstasy shot, which is worth more points. And you also get... Oh, hello. And you also get... Um... Meter up in the top left for throwing out what's basically a smart bomb. But I'm going to save my smart bomb for when I really need it. Because God knows I need it. But yeah, as you can see... This is basically a light gun game. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Light gun time. If I can remember the button. There it is. So here's the drill with Doki Doki Mode. When you have enough heart meter built up in the top left, you can turn on Doki Doki Mode. And what does Doki Doki Mode let you do? Touch the girls! Yes, indeed. It lets you touch them. There's no, like, making the clothes fall off or anything like that. But you can just rub the shit out of them. And if you fill all their meters up completely within the given time limit, you'll get bonus points for it. And now they all feel double piece. Because, as you can see there, they're holding up the peace sign in two hands, so it's double piece. It also affects your stats, weirdly enough. And I haven't figured out how exactly these girls have their stats affected, but there you go. And as you can see, the smart bomb has saved me. Now, there are also demon girls that show up. So, as you can see here, if I shoot the demon girl... Basically, these girls are invincible and they do more damage until you get rid of the demon girl. But you can see the demon girl by moving your crosshair over them. There are also things that show up via zooming in with your crosshair. Like, you'll be able to see inside objects, and you'll be able to see through some walls, not all walls, but some walls. And some of these walls can actually have girls hidden behind them. So you can find bonus girls for bonus points. And there is actually ratings you get at the end of every stage. And there's a Mr. Happiness, and if I shoot the Mr. Happiness, he'll give me not only bonus um, smart bomb power, but he'll give me bonus points too, which is very useful. So, like, see, I can see through that wall there. And that's generally the way you see, like, quest items. Like, see this? Unfortunately, I kind of... Oh, item! Lucky charm! Yes, so that's my quest item. But yeah, as you can see... You know, I'm not letting you demon girls near me. I'll shoot you in the crotch and you can just, like, lie down and... This game is freaking adorable! Like, don't get me wrong... It does run like shit half the time. Like, and it does actually affect the way your crosshair moves, which is honestly the most infuriating thing because it does slow down your crosshair movement when the frame rate drops. But, at the same time, this game is actually a ton of fun. Like, I enjoy the hell out of it. Honest to God, it's one of the most fun things I've played in a while. It's so silly and doesn't take itself seriously at all. There are events that happen as well, which are like mini games that also have you shooting things and then doing things on the touchscreen. And there's boss fights. And again, there's five different routes. So there's a bunch of stuff to do. And then you can, in um, you can seduce all the girls eventually. And there's, it's voice acting. I'll shut up for a bit. Hey, <laughs> 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 
クロナ様慣れ慣れしく呼ばないでくれるかしらクロナ様に逆らう愚かなクズムシが無駄無駄ですクロナにかかれば悪魔ハンターをやするなんて I'll skip the rest of the event but you get the general idea right so I just gotta remember which buttons to skip button <laughs> Uh, I could have sworn it was L, but apparently it's not. Um, but yeah, so also he here we can, here we can make a choice here. So I can say you're a coward, but I can also say where's the sexy costume. And I think you can actually seduce the demon girls as well, which is hilarious. But, um, yeah, it's, it's so lighthearted and doesn't take itself seriously at all. And I just love it. I'm legitimately enjoying the shit out of this game's world and atmosphere. It's really basic outside of the general, like, angels versus demons in a love, uh, in a battle for war and love and stuff like that. And this is a boss fight! I've actually done this boss fight, so this is actually kind of neat. But yeah, it's boss fight time, so we can actually show this off. So I can hit all these away, and I can do damage just by shooting the poor girl. But yeah, it's legitimately a fun time. It reminds me a lot of games like Time Crisis and Point Blank and Rescue Shot. I just, I, I really do enjoy playing games like this. And despite the fact that this game's like fan service is all hell and all that, at the same time, it's so cute and... <laughs> huh? It's fan service is all hell, but I, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Even though the controls could do to be a bit better, and the um, frame rate definitely does suffer at times. If you're wondering what happens when you run out of health, it doesn't. Um, it you can continue, but it costs some of your points. So you know you'll have a better high score if you get to the very end. So, you know. There is actually a legitimate reason to um, go through and play again. And since you get graded on your accuracy and stuff like that, there is a pretty good skill ceiling to be had. Can be a little bit annoying, honestly, you know, with um, with the controls working the way that they do and stuff like that. But, um, shit, I'm doing really badly at the moment. But, um, it is still a really enjoyable game. And I mean, I can see why people have wanted this to come over for a while, because it is legitimately quite good. I mean, technical issues aside. Yeah, you run away. Although I honestly have no idea how you got over there. Did you run behind me or something? Probably gonna run out of health, but um, uh, not much I can do about that really. Oh god, she has weak spots. I'm sorry, I didn't even know that. All right. Apparently, her weak spots the legs. Ah, that sucks. It's all right though. I can continue. I'm not gonna waste your time making you sit sit through the whole boss fight again. I'll do one more stage after this. Because there's always more stages to be had, you know. This is love how she pulls the massive rocket launcher. Technically, this girl's a demon hunter. So seeing her pull that gigantic rocket launcher, like... I don't want to say out of a vagina, but I mean, like, where else did it come from? Seeing her pull it just from out of nowhere is just kind of hilarious to me. Come on, where are you? There you are. If I just finish her off before the... There we go. I'm not going to get the damage bonus for this stage, I tell ya, but, um... Yeah, by damage, they mean, um, how much damage you took during the fight, not, um, not how much damage you dealt, because you have to deal a specific amount of damage anyway. Now I just need to remember what button it is to skip. <laughs> I hope it's start or something. I keep I can't believe I forgot. I swear I remember this. Yeah, but as you can see the loading times aren't great. And it's just loading into a cutscene, so. 
Oh no, what happened? Oh, it was just my, um... I really hope the recording doesn't catch that, but, um, that was... That was my, um, kit. Just free... I'm not, that was not my kit, that was my, um, computer. Just having everything done. Um, ha having my computer just, um, monitors turning off. It was silly. Anyway. I'll just get through all of this. I swear they used to... Oh, yeah, it's probably because I can't skip because I haven't seen this text yet. Right. Shit. Good job, brain. Yeah, anyway, event complete. And now it's going to put me um, onto the next chapter, and then I'll do one more stage, and then we'll end this video. It's nice that we got to see the boss fight, at least. Because there are a lot of boss fights in this game. There's like five or six of them. It's pretty silly. Wait for it, wait for it, wait. Alright, we got Academy Store points, but I won't take the time to spend them, so. Uh, shoe lockers. You don't even need to look at the quest to have them, just keep your eyes peeled and you'll probably see them, but um, it is nice to know when you have to be looking for a ghost or something, because the ghost quests are actually really hard to see. So, yeah. Wait for the game to load. And as you can see, we had four stages there, so you know, there's lots of, lots of stages to do, so. I don't think I've actually done the shoe lockers yet, there's a dog next door going off, I know you can hear him. The neighbours don't pay not enough attention to him, but anyway, here we go. So, Gal Gun Double Piece, while being a pretty bad port, it's adorable. It's hilarious, it's ridiculous, and I legitimately enjoy it. What are you doing? I can see you. Is there anything in the lockers I should know? Damn, I missed a, I missed a Mr. Happiness. That's, that's a phrase. Just grab the student handbook while I'm here. It's a bit weird that these girls just leave their student handbooks lying around for pretty much anyone to notice. Shot in the butt. So yeah, as you can see, there's even, um... There's even hidden girls for you to... Well, not so much hidden as much as girls you don't even have to shoot that you can shoot for bonus points. So, everything's here to make this an interesting, if not a uh, very strange, like, an owl game. The animations are adorable. Just look at that. They're adorable. Oh, was that a quest item over there? It was, but, um... I just love how they just stand there and just jump up and down like they're obviously really nervous. And there's a... a, a there's a bunch of Sundere, Sundere, I think it's pronounced, girls as well. It's great. Like, I haven't showed you one of the girls that literally hit you over the head with her letter of love, but it's... Oh, shit. Well, at least I got one of them. And there is a time bonus, too. So, the quicker you are about shooting all the all the girls, the quicker you go through the stage, the more bonus points you get. So, you know, always room to improve. Actually, you know what? I'll let you see this. Get, get off my junk, lady. Yes, there are girls that literally want to do, like, BDSM with you. They do say that as story dialogue. Ah, here comes one of the more interesting bits. So. I need a miss... Oh, well, I've already got maximum Mr. Happiness, but... Here's how these modes work. So. Shit. I will continue. I will not waste your guys' time, but... Here's how these modes work. So, when you're in this area here, you can use the D-pad or the touch screen to change what direction you're facing. And the girls can literally come from any direction. 
So it's a bit of a ow. It's a bit of a just um a fight to stay alive more or less. And again, it's interesting. Like, it's not the most complex light gun game I've ever heard of, right? But at the same time, let's do Doki Doki mode. At the same time, it is definitely a fun light gun game, right? Like, I'm enjoying the absolute bejesus out of it. Even despite the technical problems. I mean, the technical problems do get in the way, and if you're not a fan of that sort of thing, yes, these girls do have weak spots as well. If you're not a fan of that sort of, like, um, technically unpolished game, you're not going to be a fan of this. You're probably going to want to avoid this game if you don't like games that can't keep a steady frame rate. But... I'm... My dog's gonna go off for a second, too. Um, while I... While I brain work with me here, while I'm not exactly a fan of low performance either, I'm having too much fun to care. Which is a really weird thing to say, all things considered, but, um... Yeah, I'm enjoying this game immensely, and... Yeah, smart bomb, so she gets taken out, too. Unfortunately, I'm probably about to get swarmed by an absolute ton of girls as well. We should be close to the end of the stage. Take out the demon girl before she can hurt me too much. Just look at these girls, they're, they're gorgeous! Adorable! Oh no. Someone's getting a little too touchy feely for my tastes. Down you go. Probably one more way where they just absolutely flood in from everywhere. Oh, no. Is this the end of the stage? Hello, Mr. Happiness. It's insane, it's silly, it's cute, it's lovely, and I'm enjoying the hell out of Gal Gun. Double piece. And while it is hard, it is slightly hard to recommend, but I mean, if you can deal with performance problems and maybe a bit of like little repetitive gameplay and control issues, you'll probably have an absolutely fantastic time with it. I've been having a fantastic time with it. I'm probably going to keep it around. I'm going to finish it. I'm gonna just see what the rest of the game has to offer and judging by the fact that it started from slightly ridiculous and went up to like almost maximum ridiculous on this story route, who knows what the rest is gonna have. So yeah, and another cutscene because that's pretty much how this all works, right? So I'm just gonna skip through all this. You don't have to read it. <laughs> how much I welcome sexy mischief. That sounds that sounds just like me. But yep. So I'll just get through the rest of this cutscene, and hopefully it won't go straight to another level, but come on. Load up. There it is. So, Gal Gun Double Piece is familiar and yet unique. It's a lot of fun. It's got a few performance and control issues, but other than that, it's really good. It's really good, I really like it, and I would almost recommend it outright. Almost. If you can get over the, those caveats I mentioned, then you'll have a fantastic time. I'm enjoying the shit out of it. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.